This video is on the number one thing that will most define your life, both your moment-by-moment -moment experience, the quality of your life, as well as the results you actually create. In the second century AD, the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, one of the most powerful and accomplished men in all of history. He was recognized by his peers and historians ever since to be wholly deserving of his historical stature, a man of considerable wisdom and character. So one night in the year 170 AD, Aurelius was self-journaling, I'm sure long before that term was ever used, but he was self-journaling one night as he sought to clarify and amplify internally principles that he knew led to great character and a good life. His thoughts weren't original, he knew that. In fact, that he was simply substantiating his understanding of what earlier thinkers and teachers had themselves uh, observed, articulated, and passed on to Aurelius and others, including you and me. So on this night, Aurelius writes, Our actions may be impeded, but there is no impeding our intentions or our dispositions because we can accommodate and adapt. The mind adapts and converts to its own purposes, the obstacle to our acting. The impediment to action advances the action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Brilliant words. Obstacles, my friends, are inevitable. Obstacles absolutely impede our actions, agreed? They impede but never prevent. That is, unless we choose to fail ourselves and to blame the obstacle for our own self-failure, for our decision to quit. Yes, our actions can and will be temporarily blocked and or deflected by obstacles. However, our disposition, as Aurelius framed it, also known as our mindset, our attitude. Our dispositions are born of our perceptions and our beliefs. And our perceptions and beliefs are servants to no external obstacle ever. Rather, they are servant only to our inner workings, the workings of our mind. An obstacle may compel us to change tactics, strategies, but they cannot change the intention of a, per, a passionate and purposeful heart and mind. And as Aurelius observed, an obstacle often itself becomes our path. It defines our path. Because in the purposeful person, obstacles are nothing but signposts and feedback. Ones that for the life of purpose provide nothing but an education and motivation and never an excuse to quit. Isn't it true that life's most important things require time for us to achieve or master? Isn't it also true that anything and everything that requires significant time, intention and action is also going to really by definition encounter obstacles. Things of great significance require time and intention to realize. Exceptional personal growth and evolution, personal fulfillment, the certainty, the absolute knowledge, the belief that we matter to others, professional achievement and success, relationships. All of these take time to develop and unfold Significant achievement and experience is rarely, if ever, the singular milestone event that outsiders use to identify that achievement or success. The outsiders don't see the struggle and the time and the intention involved. These things evolve and unfold and reveal themselves over time, not as a singular event. And often, almost always through and often because of obstacles, after obstacle, after obstacle, even the most simple of concepts and activities, the concepts of presence and mindfulness, 
even these most simple of concepts, they require a repeated practice over time. And they only develop and grow because we exercise our intention, our mindset, our, our disposition, as Aurelius said, upon repeated obstacle over obstacle over obstacle over time, as we practice and seek mastery over our mind, our inner life. And there is no failure but in failing to begin or failing to continue. Everything else is an education or motivation to the life and the mind of purpose. But we must be of the belief set, the mindset, and the action set that define all obstacles as an education and or motivation, and never anything more. Even if our final outcome is not exactly as we had originally hoped and intended when we began our journey, or even what we hoped and intended halfway or three quarters of the way through our adventure, our journey. When we choose the path of purpose and perseverance through all obstacles, we choose a path that strengthens our character, our will, our fortitude, our lives, and the lives of those around us. And when we overcome obstacles, rather than succumb to them, this fuels the fire of our confidence, our determination, our perseverance, and our optimism, all of which are ancestors to significant personal fulfillment, happiness, and achievement. And like a muscle developed or oxygen to a fire when fed, all of these things, all of these forces expand their capacity, their force, and their effectiveness as they also begin to become second nature. Wouldn't you agree, the more significant your journey, almost certainly the greater the number and magnitude of obstacles you're gonna encounter, right? And if you slow or turn back or stop because of any of these obstacles or because of accumulation of obstacles, well, then you've written the end of your story, right? It's over, you've quit. This is designed into us. You and I are driven to make progress, to grow, to achieve, to succeed, and to matter. It's designed in to human beings. But our path cannot be perfectly known. We have no definitive map. And there are going to be, by definition, obstacles along our path. And all that matters is our beliefs about those obstacles and the subsequent actions we take on those obstacles or because of those obstacles. Because that defines how we experience life moment by moment, day after day, day. And it is largely, if not exclusively, the determining factor of our results. It's in our human spirit to live a big life, to stand out, to matter. But our brains are not designed for this. Our brains are designed to fight the nature of our spirit. Our brains are designed by evolution to seek and avoid risks, to seek and avoid potential threats, to not take risks, to not stand out, to really not matter, but to play it safe. Our brains are engineered to avoid obstacles because obstacles to the brain are a threat to our existence. To make matters worse, isn't it true that our family and society have similar brains and they reinforce this biological nature we already have? They tell us, fit in, think small, play it safe, don't get hurt, don't make waves, don't threaten me. This will maximize your odds for survival. Yet, the simple truth, the greater your ambition, the greater your passion, the greater your inevitable obstacles and the greater the number and frequency and relative size of the obstacles that you're going to encounter. But when you use your creative imagination and the passion in your heart, when you exercise dogged perseverance, you can overcome virtually or absolutely any obstacle. And in fact, as Aurelius, Marcus Aurelius articulated our obstacles often end up defining or becoming our path. And I mean that, and he meant that in the best of senses. And in any event, worst case, 
even if you weren't to arrive where you originally imagined and intended, isn't it true that the per person you develop into, the character, the confidence, and the wisdom, along with the rich nature of the experiences you will have cultivated, and the richer and the superior outcomes you will have created, wouldn't you agree that regardless of your final outcome, who you actually become and what you actually experience and the impact you will have if you don't play it safe, if you think big, if you act big, if you believe big, will certainly be much bigger because you stayed in the game, you fought your fight, and you persevered, you continued. Shakespeare said, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So why not think of obstacles as those, yes, painful experiences, but ones that make us wiser, stronger, and more capable? The very things that forge the metal of our character and our will. Shakespeare also said, this above all, to thine own self, be true. So why not stay true to yourself, never true to any perception of the power or finality of an obstacle? Why not stay true to your highest self, never to the perceived force of any obstacle? Because if you do, the person you become and the things you will achieve, indeed, will cast a shadow over the person you will otherwise become or the things you otherwise will do.